Hi, I'm the wispy mustache on your Grandma Ethel's lip. Yvonne DiCullo. <laughs> and welcome to Fairytale Theater. I'm Shelley Duvall. Welcome to the Victory Lap, where we'll be discussing last week's episode of... So last week, we missed our review. We were just very heartbroken about Miss Cracker leaving the competition. We were in mourning. So the thing that I want to steal from this episode is Asia saying, I thought I was the very last woman. I think I'm gonna use that like forever anytime that I get into any makeup. I am the last woman. My overall reaction to this episode was just sort of meh. It started out kind of weird with the pancake face brunch challenge. I was really stoked that it was gonna be like a cooking challenge or something, but then they didn't even end up eating the food that they presented. Okay. They took one of the extra pancakes, cut four morsels off and just gave those to like Cheyenne Jackson. crumbs. Well, and the crumbs. Other, that was the other thing. They had Cheyenne Jackson come on. I Conte. But they had him come on to like judge the pancake contest, but there was something so off in the editing. I'm also gonna say, I think a lot of it is just that we are sorely missing like Monet exchange. Monet brought a vibrance to the workroom and everything that doesn't happen on the main stage. I really felt the absence of. So I think more than anything that for me, this episode was defined by a lack of Monet. I didn't shave down here. I was really disappointed by this mini challenge because it wasn't puppets. Everybody loves puppets, Everybody except for this season. Love Nobody loves puppets this season. Nobody loves puppets this season. Then moving on to the main challenge, the girls were tasked with creating their evilest evil twin and presenting that on the main stage, as well as the idealized version of themselves. So it was a challenge where you're supposed to kind of bring out your split personalities. Your inner saboteur. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were upset about the fact that RuPaul said the Bipolar Express, which, like, I'm not bothered by as someone who does struggle with mental health issues, as someone who understands that drag is irreverent, as someone who understands that the intent is not to make fun of mental health, but to make a pun. RuPaul and Michelle's podcast is sponsored by Talkspace, which is a online service that you can connect with a therapist with. So RuPaul is in the know about mental health. So I don't think the intent was malicious at all. And I think the people that are trying to make it a malicious issue are trying to find something to be upset about. So let's talk about the main stage looks. At the end of the day, a design challenge. Cameron did a very similar silhouette for both her good and evil looks. There was like the water tribe kind of a look. And then there was like the Skyrim. Skyrim is for the Nords, Forsworn type of a look. They were two sides of the same coin, which was that warrior princess thing. But it was just, you know, that good warrior princess from, you know, the good tribe. But then there was the antagonist tribe where it's the warrior princess that's trying to kill the good princess. So they totally connected to, for me. I think the problem was twofold. They were interesting ideas, but they didn't take it far enough in either direction. There was something about it that was very cosplay on a budget and it didn't seem like Cameron. It felt more like I'm gonna hide behind this character and concept. For Cameron to have excelled in this, I feel like she really needed to dig into her aesthetic that she ascribes to, which is that muscle Barbie aesthetic. The biggest problem for me with Cameron is that she seemed disconnected with the runway. And then her whole audio track kept talking about being a muscle Barbie and neither of her looks had anything to do with that. And then we move on to Eureka who did two different plaid numbers. Her pink one was cute. I will totally give it that. But then you move on to the divine inspired one and I didn't quite understand why her evil side looked like divine. Divine was kind of gross and Divine did some shock factor things, but Divine wasn't evil. She did a very much a share and Clueless reference with her first look. A little, it was like share and Clueless meets Elle in Legally Blonde. I didn't see the Divine inspiration myself. Everyone else did. Everyone else did, but I didn't. It really just looked like Eureka. It was Sandy. It was Sandy and Grease. Like, <laughs> dark in the eyeshadow, put some, you know, some leather on it, and now she's a bad girl. It just didn't read Eureka to me. I don't see Eureka as a cutesy schoolgirl type character, so it didn't translate to me. I wonder if that was gonna be like her divine look, if she was gonna do Snatch Game with Divine still. Like, would that have been the look? 
Then we have Miss Cracker who is giving us like a Marie Antoinette silhouette. And then for her evil side, she gave us something very similar with the choker and everything. But again, it just didn't seem like Ms. Cracker to me. I mean, obviously we don't know these queens personally. We don't know them very well, except what we've seen on the show. But what we've seen on the show, Ms. Cracker's branded herself as being stupid. And that's kind of more what I wanted to see. The problem with Cracker's looks for me were, I didn't mind the Marie Antoinette look. I thought it was fun and it was cute. The problem with it was that there was no connection to the inner saboteur look. On the other side of that though, it was a little too literal. I did love that headdress, I will say, and that was about the only thing I enjoyed about her second look. Miss Cracker brought headdresses back this season. She said, I'm going to give you headdresses. The you house don't, down. You don't need them. Maybe you don't want them but I'm gonna bring them. Moving on to Aquarius, who had my favorite looks of the night. She had her a lavender look for her first one, which was lavender super avant-garde. and lime. Two colors I would not put together. But somehow worked flawlessly. And her second look was almost like something that you would see in a J-pop music video, I feel like. Something like Kiari Pamu Pamu would wear a silhouette like that. And then the face mask that she had, and I knew that she was gonna win that challenge the moment that RuPaul compared her to Violet, Raja, and Chad. Three winners of the show. First of all, it was editorial from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Both looks had that editorial Aquaria signature to them. The second reason they were very successful for me was that the good side, the idealized Aquaria look, was very much, it was pastel, it was soft, it was ultra feminine, but still fashion forward. And when we were watching the episode, I thought she had a big thing of lace. There was a head wrap and then it was a wig. Okay. They were bangs. It was the reception, I apologize for, <laughs> for any ill will thought towards you. And now what made the dark look so successful was even though they were so different, she connected them by having this dark side of her come out wearing the bloody gloves and apron with the bloody feather from her good side's hat. And it was, it was dark and it was edgy, but it was still Aquaria. And it wasn't trying too hard. But Aquaria, understood perhaps better than everyone else that your inner saboteur is still you. It is not a dark character or caricature. And the other thing I really liked about it was that Aquaria is very much showing a lot of skin and a lot of body this whole season, but her inner saboteur was completely covered up. Yeah. Even, even the face. And I liked that a lot because I think most people would like maybe go for making the inner saboteur the like, naked one. The slutty the friend. The slutty friend. But I liked that it was all covered up and it was concealed and it there was just very much like I'm hiding behind so much. One of my favorite things about it was the bone sticking out of the spine. Oh Something yeah, about the that spine. was so cool. Yeah. And then we move on to Asia. And Asia? she was doing like oh, yeah. an orangey showgirl. She did look like a cream sickle. I thought she looked like a fox. Really? I thought, I immediately thought fox because of that shade of orange and the white. And then I guess it was supposed to be a bow. It but was. It her, was a hair bow. The hair looked like ears to me. Oh, okay. So she looked like a fox. The balloon storyline did connect well with her dark-sided version who came out as like this weird clown type of a creature with the burned balloons and like the burned showgirl outfit. Like something was really cool about it, yeah. but it was a little bit like Miss Fame doing the divine, like, err, I'm bad. It was a little more heavy handed. What I did appreciate about Asia's two looks, the overall theming to it, very much read like circus showgirl. You had like, you know, the fun, lighthearted, simple showgirl, and then the weighed down, just dark, heavy, inner darkness almost and they tied together just enough for me that I really liked it. I think for it to have been 100% successful for me, I think the creamsicle look needed more on the bodysuit. Her dark look was beautiful and just completely taking off, oh, you know, obviously she still had a ton of drag makeup on, <laughs> but to just bear it down to just the black lip and the black 
you know, almost angry clown eyeliner in contrast with the pretty, you know, like tightrope walker showgirl and then the dark angry clown. It was a great second look for me and I really enjoyed it. I just wish there had been some sort of like long train or more like long elements or high feathers to the showgirl look so that everything with the showgirl was very up and bright and then it was all down with the, um, the inner saboteur look. I just want to know where she got the helium. Overall with the challenge, I think I was just, I wasn't feeling it as much as I wanted to. I really wish that somebody had gone for more of a sad inner saboteur and someone more personification of like depression. I think the overall problem with this challenge was that I don't think they totally got it. I felt like everybody else was just sort of like, it's, you know, it's good twin, bad twin. When it was more than that, it was create, it was personifying that voice in the back of your head that tells you you are not enough. It's personifying that part of you that always struggles, that part of you that holds yourself back. It's your inner saboteur. And I don't know if it was that they didn't understand it or nobody was willing to take it to that level. I don't know what it was, but some there was definitely a disconnect there. And that was the hardest part about the episode for me. And I think I kind of understood pretty early on that for the most part, they weren't getting that. So with all of that in mind, we move on to the most upsetting part of the episode, which I want to just kind of breeze through. And that's Miss Cracker getting eliminated from the competition. I personally enjoyed Cracker's lip sync. I really enjoy Cameron, but it's disappointing that three strikes in a row, she's still in and Miss Cracker got in the bottom one time and got sent home. And it just seems kind of like a little unfair track record wise. Like it yeah. almost, it sets up Cameron to not do well for the finale, which you can tell going into the next episode that she just was still reeling in. And in this one, she was still reeling in from sending Monet home. And it's because she's a sensitive person. Yeah. And it's just upsetting. A lot of the people I thought were going to do so much better got sent home and it's, Weird, I wasn't expecting a lot of the eliminations that ended up happening. But in general, another problem I think I've had with this season is I haven't totally understood all the praise certain queens have been getting. While I think they're all incredibly talented and I do think they all do wonderful jobs and they do work very, very hard, I've not seen what the judges are seeing every week. And that's been hard for me this season. So let us know what your thoughts were in the comments below. I'm so sorry that we were not able to get this done sooner. If you would like to support us and help us get things done more on time, there's a little little thing down there that you can check out and maybe it'll give you some, some hints. Leave your thoughts in the comments below and we will see you all for the next episode in just a few minutes. I'm gonna go change my hair and my outfit so that I'm, not, I'm appearing to have put in some work. Judy. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you all then. Bye. Bye.